Well, joining me now to look at the week in federal politics are two avid political journalists. Tonda McCharles is a parliamentary reporter for the Toronto Star, and Ian Bailey is a member of the Ottawa Bureau of the Globe and Mail. Both of you, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Okay, let's start with something which really, really caught a lot of attention this week, and that is the woes within the Green Party of Canada and enemy polls, the national leaders, problems faced with dissension and, uh, and real difficulties within her own party. I want to ask you the most general question. What do you make of it and what's at the heart of it? Because there's a lot of different takes on what's going on. Uh, Tonda. Well, what I make of it is enemy Paul is in a real uh, power struggle internally to keep her leadership. Um, she's been uh, accused of an arrogant leadership style. Um, and she says that the people who accused her of that are resistant to change are on the way out. Let's see in the coming weeks if she can keep her grip on the party. Um, she was not helped, obviously, by the departure of Jenica Atwin. The Liberals poached Jenica Atwin. I think uh, it's pretty clear by now that because politically she's an asset for them in Fredericton and um, between the two of them, between the Atwin, at one end, the Liberal banner, that seat's going to go Liberal uh, the next time around. It won't go to the Greens Okay. Uh, should they put someone else up. But I, I just want to say that, you know, what's at the heart of it is really um, broader than just, you know, uh, enemy Paul's internal struggle. I mean, for her also then to be flinging accusations of racism and anti-feminism and misogynism around widely and broadly, uh, that didn't look good on her. I mean, she's a political leader and she's got to be able to get into the brawl. Okay, I want to ask that question too. Um, but I mean, a, a week ago, what had caught attention was was the ongoing fight over the issue of Israel Palestine, and Jenica Atwin said that that was one of the things that spurred her departure. There was a comments by Annami Paul's senior uh, advisor who stepped down, but who had basically threatened the MPs who didn't see eye to eye with Annami Paul, uh, defeating them in the next election. That was seen as the as one of the main things was this disagreement on the Middle East question. But then uh, Ian, the issue of racism came out and uh, Annami Paul saying that she is the first Jewish woman and the first black woman to lead a federal political party. She says it wasn't going to be easy and this is about racism. What do you make of that? Well, what I make of this is that this is the worst thing that could happen to the Green Party on the eve of a possible uh, federal election. Um, I make of this that if Miss Paul goes uh, down, if the party loses her as a leader, this could be a very, um, a very, uh, bad fit on the Green Party in this era where there are concerns and interests in diversity. It, it just does not look good. But it remains to be seen how this plays out. You know, it, it occurs to me that if Miss Paul can somehow survive this, ride this out, you know, she has a visibility now, given this mess, given this situation, given attention to it, that may in fact play well for her and for the Greens going ahead. But the Greens, you know, they, they're, 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 they don't poll very highly. They have only a few seats where they're competitive across the country, where they have a shot. Uh, as Paul is running in Toronto Centre, which is going to be a really tough fight. So it's, it's a really complicated situation, poorly timed for this party. Yeah, there's the, the fundamental thing, though, too, that reporters have been asking Annamie Paul for the whole week, for three days now, is that the federal council, not the people who've resigned from it, but even the remaining federal council of her party, have asked her to do two things. One is to, to basically distance herself and apologize for the comments from her former senior advisor, Noah, Noah Zatsky, who uh, basically had threatened to help defeat MPs who were not agreeing with her, and also to commit to supporting her two remaining caucus MPs. She's not said what she will do in terms of disowning uh, or, or apologizing for her former senior advisor. How can a party leader continue on uh, and, and, and not distance themselves from an advisor who has threatened MPs, uh, sitting MPs, uh, anyone? Well, I, look, she has said this week that she does support those MPs and she's made clear that uh, she needs their support. Yeah. And frankly, I find it a little, um, I don't know, concerning, I guess, that um, people within her party would ask Annami Paul, a black Jewish woman, to denunciate and publicly repudiate and denounce um, her staffer, who was also Jewish. To me, that smacks of something out of communist China. I, I find that uh, a troubling, you know, call for them. I think they need to get their internal party uh, struggles in order. They do need to uh, figure out what a clear and coherent stance on Israel-Palestine is 
for the party. And I know this is a party that works on consensus, not, you know, the way we expect traditional parties to work sort of almost a command and control kind of uh, play. But but I think that I think that you, I think Annamie Paul, um, I think, can be forgiven for sort of wondering if that's the way she wants to handle this by public denunciations. I, I, I think that really what some of that stuff needs to be sorted out. And by the way, a lot of it was in play long before yeah. Jenica Atwin got yeah. poached by the Liberals. OK. Um, OK. Let's move to something else. And I, I, I'd like to get your views on we have less than two weeks left of the parliamentary sitting and perhaps less than two weeks left of, the par- of this parliament, depending on whether it's a fall election. Uh, this was a week, and mm-hmm. most of it happened on Thursday night, where we saw uh, uh, basically a finding of contempt of parliament of the head of the Public Health Agency of Canada and a demand to produce documents. And we saw a, s- a motion of censure of the Defence Minister, Hardit Sajjan, both from uh, majority votes of the House of Commons. Rough and tumble time for the go- government. How mm-hmm. is the government doing, or is this just all inside the Beltway stuff as we head into a possible election? Ian, what do you make of... Uh, of what we've seen in the last few days. Well, it feels like the election has already started, frankly. Um, the Prime Minister's remarks today about the Conservatives and ele- accusing the Conservatives of obstruction of Parliament and his sort of a two-fisted defense of Defence Minister Sajid, you know, suggests that, um, you know, the, the government is sort of already putting the pieces in play for their election campaign and their election rhetoric. So, so that's, to me, what it feels like right now. Um, Parliament will be done, I guess, or the sitting of the House will be done and due course, and it'll be interesting to see how this plays out beyond that in the weeks ahead before an election that at this point seems inevitable. Mm -hmm. On that demand of producing documents, unredacted documents about these Chinese scientists who were fired from the microbiology lab, uh, that's still outstanding. We have to see what happens on Monday when uh, Ian Stewart is supposed to be at the bar of Parliament to A, produce himself, and B, produce the documents. That's still outstanding. Could that be something that precipitates an election? Because some people have suggested that the opposition parties would have to to call the government's bluff. If they don't produce the documents, they'd have to have maybe a motion motion of non-confidence in the government, which we know the NDP doesn't want to do. Do you really think that the, any opposition party wants to go into a campaign telling Canadians that we didn't get the paper we wanted? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, and I think they'll find a way out of it. Um, but look, the fact that the government has been um, censured for this that and that their defense minister has been found in contempt for his handling of a, a matter. Uh, these are these are parliamentary procedures that don't get much attention from Canadians. But on the other hand, it just it's black mark on their government's record, a government that campaigned the last time on promising to respect parliament and parliamentarians. So it's it's one of those checks that the opposition parties will uh, pronounce on the campaign trail. But fundamentally, I don't, I don't A, think it's going to trigger an election or um, B, stick with uh, many Canadians uh, beyond the partisans, the okay. hardcore partisans. I'm going to put you both on the spot because we may not have a chance to speak until we're into the summer. Uh, Ian. Uh, if you had to put a percentage pointage uh, on the probability of a fall election and Parliament not returning, what's your guess? Yeah, I won't hold you to it, of course. 80%. Yeah. Okay. Tonda, we turn to you. Betting odds. Well, I, I'm not very good on betting. I often lose. But I would go like full on. They're not, we're not going to be back in a fall parliament. We're going to be in an election in the fall. Okay, this is one of those moments where I say we're going to take, we're going to keep the tape no, and we will play no, it back no, to you. No, don't get to do that. <laughs> no, you added an answer. Okay, well, if we don't speak before we're into the summer, I want to wish you all the best, both of you, a happy and healthy summer. And thanks for speaking with us. Thank you very much. Thanks, Martin.